what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back here with a new video. I'm here with my guest. Ah, Ahmed. I am I'm happy to be here as always, man. It's a I part of my most friend. friend I always <laughs> wanted to bring over here for a long time now. Um, so we're going to be checking out some Muslim videos, some Islamic videos, which I use the word Muslim, by the way. Um, so we're going to be reacting to the Bible says Jesus is not God. A shocking evidence. I've checked this out before, so I wrote him over here. So we we'll have a honest review uh, about what to think about this video. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's get to it. Cause let's get before, into yeah. it, guys. Um, I brought my Bible right here. I mm. think we use it. I'm also a good Quran. So let's check this out and see how it goes. You know how I do it, guys? Talk to us about it yet more. Let's get into the video. Despite the fact that Jesus, peace be upon him, is one of the most significant personalities to have ever walked the earth, he is also perhaps the most misunderstood and misrepresented person in history. Just who is Jesus? What is his nature? God? Man? Both? This video will examine some reasons from the Bible why Jesus cannot be God. The doctrine of the Trinity defines God as one being who exists eternally as three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Each person is said to be fully God, yet Trinitarians believe they are not three gods, but one God. A key element of the Trinity is the Incarnation. This teaches that the second person of the Trinity, God the Son, took on human flesh in the bodily form of Jesus, Thus, when Mary gave birth to Jesus, God entered into the creation as a human being. However, such beliefs contradict what the Bible teaches about God's nature. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. The Bible defines God's nature as eternal and unchanging. Indeed, God cannot True. change because he transcends time. So the claim that God became flesh is a contradiction. Such beliefs also call into question God's perfection. Since God is the pinnacle of perfection, there is no need for him to become anything. If something needs to be added to his nature, such as humanity or anything else for that matter, then doesn't that mean he lacked something before? Which state is considered more... I was about to post it right now. Um, I believe God is um, eternal, is everlasting, like it never comes on end. I believe God can't change. He said this in his word, like, instead of the Bible to change, heaven and earth is going to pass away. So um, I feel like if you, he can't change who he is. But having this son is, is exactly what we're talking about um, in the first video we made. Mm. Um, they are seeing the son as um, natural bit. Okay. But that is not um, exactly how it is. Because Jesus came, um, came in the form of a human being, which was to make the world feel like it should be among them. The person who, how we see it, or how I see it myself. Jesus came to be a flesh, so people will see him as normal. Okay. So he's a human being like me. So if I get what you're trying to tell me is that God came in human form. The Son of God came in human form. <laughs> the Son of God came. Yeah. No, God came in human form. No, I, did, I, did I say God came? I no, said, I'm asking. Like, no, that's what I'm saying. God is the ultimate. It, okay. For some Christians, I've got, I've met some Christians that told me like God came in human form. That's Jesus. That for you, that's what he. For me, is the Son of God. You get because the Bible 
that I read myself that I've gone through, it's always referring to God. Even when um, the dove came upon um, Jesus' head when they were baptizing, John was yeah, baptizing, he said, God. this is the son of God. My with son, whom, who are more um, with whom I'm well pleased. pleased with. So yeah. the voice that came from above, from heaven, never said, this is God, who are more pleased. He said, this is my son. Okay, so he said, me, myself, I see Jesus as the son of God. Not God himself. Not God himself. Okay. Just that the work in hand, okay. like, is a command. So Jesus came to the earth uh, in human flesh to fulfill, fulfill the word of God. Okay. You get It's like, the way you guys see messenger, um, yeah. as the messenger came to, um, God sent messengers to come. Mm. I see Jesus as the son of God. God sent him as a messenger, messenger to okay. preach the word to human. Okay. So he came through the form of human flesh. To preach the word the of word God, to God. give the word of God. To human flesh. You see, when Jesus came, you see, he, have never, he, did, he did not come to change the word of the old, I mean, the word of Moses during the um, Old Testament. He came to add to it, con to contribute to it. Do you get that? Is, that was his mission. Okay. And also to save humanity. That's how we Christians see it as. Okay. Uh, how, how I give the example? Okay, that. because like in the olden days, the prophets, each nation, yeah, each nationality or each people has their own prophet. That's why you see like um, Moses was sent to his to the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. Abraham has his own people. So they were Israel. going to preach for that people. This yeah. person go to preach that people. Preach for those people. Yeah, but that, that is not how I see Jesus as Jesus oh. as came for everyone. Okay, because like that's what I, I've seen it in the Bible before. Like it was just sent to the Israelites and all of that. Never seen that. Okay, no, no I understand. It. Um, so that's how we see it to be. That's how I see um Jesus to be. And when he was going, says going to send him um a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's where another issue came between uh -huh, Muslims and like Christians, Christians as well. That who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? That uh, how will God send the Spirit that human being can see? That is one of the, aside Jesus' death misconception and Jesus yeah. being the Son of God, yeah. the misconception of, is that correct misconception? Like the argument. The argument yeah. between um, Muslim and, and Christian about yeah. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They see the Holy Spirit as Jesus was referring to as Muhammad. Yeah, because like, why we say that? When you listen to like the statement they made, you read that sentence. You know, in English, we use the word he, yeah. pronoun. That's from as male, male formality. Yeah, a man. I guess. Say, a human being. So he he it's mentioned is it seven times here, and they use the word himself. That's uh, uh, I've forgotten what type of pronoun is that. You see, that's a, pronoun. Yeah, I've I've read that scripture. That same scripture. Um, if you still read down, you see he was talking about the Holy Spirit. Okay. So I I don't know why the English translation was using that he 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 he, mm -hmm. but. Your own side is like he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, yeah. Okay, so uh, that's it. So we are just discussing for me to like tell you how I see it <laughs> for real. <laughs> so uh, that, that, that I say it's uh, so let's keep watching guys and see what more they have to offer. Godly, the pre incarnation God or post incarnation God. You can see that the doctrine of the incarnation puts Trinitarians in a blasphemous predicament. Trinitarians try to get around this problem by arguing that when God became a man, a human nature was merely added to God's existing divine nature. Since the two natures did not mix, the divine nature did not change at all, and so God remained the same. Can this be considered valid reasoning? Well, if God added a new nature to himself, then that is a change in state. Was God always a man? He was not. Did he become a man? According to Trinitarians, he did. So to claim that God did not change is nothing more than philosophical wordplay. The New Testament mentions an incident with Jesus and a fig tree. Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. 
Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. We are told that Jesus approached a fig tree because he was hungry, and when he realized it had no fruit, he became angry and cursed it. Now such an incident makes no sense in light of the Trinitarian claim that Jesus is fully God. God is all-knowing. So if Jesus really is God, then that would make him the creator of fig trees. In which case, how could he have been ignorant of the fact that it was not the season for figs? If Trinitarians want to argue that it was the limited human nature that made this mistake, then why did the divine nature... Um, for that statement, see, mm -hmm. the, one, the Bible itself was like, it yeah. made a statement there, like it was on the season for the tree to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. For me, Jesus knew how I see it, that it was not the season. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it, it cost it, but I feel like if him himself is seeing it like, um, just human nature, how I'm seeing it to be, that the tree ought to bear fruit. Yeah, but it's not the season. But it's not the season. Uh -huh. But I know, but for me, I know Jesus knew it was not the season. But him causing it, I don't really get the reason why. Yeah, because like, if you're saying Jesus is God in some way, like Christians in Jesus is God, mm -hmm. that means God is all knowing, yeah? Mm -hmm. He will know, like, from afar, he will, can tell, like, me, this, is a, is it, this tree it will bear fruit and the season and all of that. You see, for me, I feel like Jesus can just speak weight to the tree right there at that spot, mm -hmm. bear fruit, and fruit is going to come. Mm -hmm. You get. But he didn't do that. Then why did he cast the tree? That is the thing we don't understand. Because Jesus having the power to heal the blind, raise the dead, such a man can tear a tree to bear fruit. Yeah, through the power of God. That's what we believe. <laughs> All these things he did was through the power of God. Yes, accepted. Okay. So, because when Jesus, Jesus also prayed. Who was he praying to? God. Okay. So, um, such a man have the power to speak weights to the tree and fruit is going to come. Even if it's not the season. Yeah. Because according to my religion, they say if your faith is as little as the monster seed, you can tell you can say to this mountain, be that removed and be placed in somewhere else. Faith, believe. Yeah. So I feel like such a man have the power to speak words and take fruits from the trees. Also the miracles of um, his disciples that he told them to go cast their nets into the into the sea yeah. and get fishes. Such a man has such power. But him knowing it's not the season, mm -hmm. he gets and he didn't speak any words like barefoot. He just yeah. cost it straight. There must be another reason okay. doing that. That's how I see it as not because he do, he's not aware or he does not know. Okay. That's how I see it. As. Because even if to put it like in the context like he's not aware, his disciples were also there. Yeah, but you can't tell me all of them are ignorant or stuff that they don't know about. It's, yeah, if you look at the context of the scripture there yeah it, it was from afar like it is he taught before he even got there he taught like he knows that it's a fig tree yeah he, from afar he taught like it has bare fruit already so that's what they're saying if you say that like, jesus is god god is all knowing from afar of even from our thoughts god knows what we are thinking about sure yeah so if you're saying jesus is god that means he's all knowing that means he, from afar he should know like this tree. Is it that? Pardon me, sorry. But I see, I see it like that is how human perceive it to be. Okay, so like his human nature was working at that point in time, not his divine nature. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Based on the way you're seeing it. Um, no, what I mean is like uh, we will see it like if God, people see Jesus as God. Mm -hmm. You get yeah. I see Jesus as the son of God. Okay. And people, you guys, you said right now that if he is God, he ought to know this mm. tree yes. is a fig tree. Okay. Even when we start looking at the tree itself, like still yeah, putting God, his face, yeah, God is all knowing yeah. how. I get that. Boy, him being hungry and seeing the tree and expecting the tree to bear fruit, yeah. even if it's not the season, yeah. and laying cost on it, he knows. Okay. So, but the reason why he cursed the tree, that's the thing you don't know. You can't. Understand. I don't know the reason why. Okay. Aside it being unfruitful, the tree was not, it's not a season to bear fruit. That is, 
It's like you saying you're beating the child for not speaking when it's not grown enough to speak. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You get. Yeah. I feel like it's only Jesus who knows the reason why, why he, did he did that. that. Okay. At least I have understood like for you, you don't see him as God, you see him as the son of God. Yeah. So okay. So let's keep watching that as well, man. Nature act on the mistake of the human nature. Is this a case of the human nature overriding the divine nature? Is such a thing possible? Moreover, why would God curse the fig tree for producing fruit in certain seasons? Something he himself willed it to do. If Jesus is God, then wouldn't it have been more befitting of him to command the tree to bear fruit? Why ruin a perfectly good tree? Come fig season, this tree would have had fruit and others could have eaten from it. We can see that when it comes to the knowledge of Jesus, it seems that either the divine nature is lacking or completely absent. How then can the claim be made that Jesus is fully God? From what we've seen, it seems that... You see, this statement here, yeah, it's kind of like, um, I'll see it like an absurd. The reason why I said so is because um, the woman with the um, issue of blood, I don't know if it was written in the um, Quran, but according to my Bible, and there was a woman who um, had, she's always having flow of blood and it's, this, it's very, very smelly. So people are always um, right. running away from her and stuff. So she had the conviction in her heart, like if she's able to touch the garment of Jesus Christ, she was going to be healed, you get. So um, she just was in a crowd of people, you understand? So there was this, the woman herself struggled because she was menaced, so some people were um, oh, living. Uh -huh. Some people were like, oh, still, hmm, and stuff like that. So she struggled to touch the garment of Jesus Christ. And immediately she touched, according to my Bible, she was healed. Then, immediately such thing happened. Jesus turned and was like, who touched me? You understand? So the disciples were like, ah, Jesus, there are a lot of people around here. There are a lot of people who are touching you, so you can't tell us who touched you. A lot of people are already touching you. Is there something have left his body? You get yeah. So you can um, such an incident that happened. Like according to what my Bible is written, I'm saying like that. So exactly what he's saying. Like it does not call a deed. Like I don't know how you use the word. Like yeah, I get it does it. not relate. Like yeah. such a man who um being in the human form. Oh God, such person being in your human form who is able to detect detect such a thing like that. Such incidents. You can't tell me that man can tell a tree. To bear for fruit and stuff like that, you get. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, I feel like it does not relate to how the person who is explaining this video to be like. Okay, so now what I'm saying, like the concept, how, if, where you're perceiving it and what he's saying, is yeah. like two different things. Yeah. Now you've accepted like he's just a son of God, not God himself. Yet. I so, as the son it, of God. Fine. Yeah. So what he's trying to say, yeah, he's trying to prove like. Um, people see Jesus as God himself, like God came in human form. So as the attributes of God said that, like one of the attributes of God, he's all-knowing. So what he's trying to say, like if he's all-knowing, like if Jesus, as what people are claiming that Jesus is God in human mm -hmm. form, if he is like that, that means he should have that attribute, like all-knowing. From afar, you should know like this fruit has not bear anything yet and it's not the season. And two, God will just see in Islam, we say, Kun fire, Kun be, and it becomes, yeah? So, for J if Jesus is God in human form at that point in time, he should just say, bear fruit, and it should bear fruit, you get? But what he's saying, it's not like he's denying that see, Jesus can't do it all. Uh, yeah. What he's saying, like, he can only do it, all those healings he did, he did it with what? God's will, like God said, okay, allow it to be. You see, this is why I always believe Jesus is the son of God, is because when he was here on earth, he prayed to the Father, who is in heaven. Okay. You understand? There was also an instance when um, Jesus went to a way. There was a woman who Jesus narrated her entire story in front of her. I told her she had divorced, she has five husbands and stuff. He knew, he already knew about her. Before she even... Before she even opened her mouth, he was like, who, who told you about me? He already knew her history. Yeah, because that's so, God wants. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you have to use that instance to compare this one, like, well, how come he don't know the fruit, um, the tree, 
and can bear fruit. So such a man who knows the history of a woman already, her divorce, her life since she was small since she was big. Mm -hmm. You get. Yeah, I get. So yeah, in that point in time, maybe God using at that point in time to understand. Wait, so, if you but, go back, if you go back in that encounter with that woman, mm -hmm. I mean, God sent him to go meet the woman, right? I would say it like that. Fine. So like that means God has given him the divine knowledge about the woman before that time. Right? Yeah. True. Well, how this person who is narrating this video to be like, he does not. Um, he said God is all knowing. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like undermining Jesus. Jesus is powerful. How I'm seeing it. Yeah, how I'm seeing it over here. Okay. For me, that is how I'm seeing it. Like okay. In Islam, even Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our prophet, mm -hmm. and all our prophets, we see them as mere mortal. Uh -huh. that, is, that, is, that, is, yeah. that is the issue with it, um, Christian and Muslim. Okay. I don't see him as a mere Mortal. Okay. So him, sorry, the way he's explaining Jesus to be is like a mere mortal. Yeah, undermining his superiority. Ability, superiority. Uh huh. Oh. So it's kind of like as he's saying, it's kind of like making me angry. Oh, I get you. You get so. so I see it like why is he putting it in okay. such context? So it, it, why we do that, or why we see it that way? Mm -hmm. Because like you don't have any. You can't move one step. You can't. Even um, as I'm talking now, like my eyes are shaking here. I can't move my eye from this point to this point that without the command of God. You get okay. without God's permission for it to happen. Okay. You get that's what we believe. Like I can't shake. Nothing can happen to me without God's command. Mm. You get so. Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. They don't have any power. Like, within seconds, God can say, die, you are dead. You see, you don't have the power to say, no, I can't die. So that's what we believe. Like, God is way above everything. Like, you can't compare any human being, anything. Yeah, Jesus also said, I understand what you, what you mean. Um, when Jesus was about to die, mm -hmm. he said, let his will be done. He didn't say, let my will be done. You know what I'm saying? So he was given acknowledgement. That something greater is above. Yeah, to yeah. God. So that's why uh, I keep on saying he's the son of God. Also in the Bible, it was written, he is the son of God. I always keep on clarifying that um that part. A lot of people have asked me the question, if you say God, Jesus is God, why? I always tell them like Jesus is the son of God because the prayer when he prayed, he was praying to God. Mm. He fasted. He was fasting to God. You can't tell me God, yeah. you, you can't tell me um God fast. Yeah. You get he fasted. He, at the time he's about to die in the cross of Calvary, according to my Bible, he said, let your will be done. Okay. You can't tell me um, he was referring to himself. There was, there's a superior above. being, right. so on above. So that's why I keep on saying that, Jesus. clarifying it to everybody, like he's the son of God, he was saint. Okay. So I guess, so if this guy is saying this way, don't see it as a bad way. Not like he's belittling Jesus or Muhammad. For me, I see it as his own understanding. Yeah, but like as a Muslim person, you okay. get all those prophets are nothing compared to God. You get so like they, we see them as mere mortal. They are being sent by God. God can just you are gone. So you see, we he, we don't have any power. Jesus's miracles he performed, yeah, are all because of the will of God. He did it by God's will, not by his own will. You can't just take death and turn it into like power humans, like normal human beings. Just that God instilled in them something different from us. Mm. You see, like if your leader is here, God God will make the person walk, talk, act different from normal people. You get even with yeah. people that have knowledge, mm. the way they talk to you about the thing they have knowledge about, as some someone that doesn't have knowledge about it, don't speak that way. You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't speak that way. When someone has knowledge about things, speak they speak and, and explain for you to understand better. Yeah, so that's it. So it's like that. They are mere mortal, but God gave them something that they didn't give. He doesn't give other people. So we don't we see them as prophets of God, messengers of God. Mm -hmm. But they are mortals like us, but they are just made different. But when you compare them to God, they are nothing. 
Yeah, that's how you guys see them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Let's keep on watching it. Jesus this. is human, but not divine because he lacks essential attributes of God, such as possessing Sengage. all knowledge. Moreover, such divine shortcomings aren't just restricted to Jesus. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit also lacks God's perfect knowledge. But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Here Jesus categorically states that no one, which includes himself and the Holy Spirit, knows the hour, but only the Father. Since they both Fact. lack the Father's... Accepted. Yeah, that's true. true. That, that's the same thing with Islam. Like, God said it's when the prophet asked if he knows the hour. He said, no one knows the hour, the hour except mm -hmm. God, Allah. That's the only person that knows the hour, the time when everything will come to an end. Knowledge, the Trinitarian claim, that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are equal is false. The co-equality of the persons is a central pillar, without which the foundation of the Trinity comes crashing down. There is an interesting incident according to the New Testament, where a Jewish teacher of the law approaches Jesus and asks him which of the commandments is the most important. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. This incident was the perfect opportunity for Jesus to correct Jewish misconceptions about God's nature and give a Trinitarian understanding. As you can see, the exact opposite is the case. By quoting the Old Testament commandment about God being one and agreeing with the Jewish teacher's interpretation, Jesus is affirming a Jewish understanding of God that is purely monotheistic and rejects all notion of God being a trinity. Not only is the Jewish teacher's wisdom about God acknowledged, but Jesus goes so far as to compliment him, saying that he is close to the kingdom of God. In another incident, Jesus prays to God and says, Father, the hour has come. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Notice that Jesus identifies the Father as the only true God to the exclusion of himself, the Son. Now, if Jesus really is part of a trinity, then he would have said the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the only true God. From these examples, it's clear that Jesus followed in the footsteps of the prophets of the Old Testament, such as Abraham and Moses. Does it make sense that God would send countless prophets over a span of thousands of years with a consistent message of pure monotheism only to all of a sudden reveal that he is a trinity, a radically different message which contradicts his previous prophet's teachings. Muslims respect and love Jesus as a great... So that's uh, I don't know what you have to like, say about it. No. Oh. Yeah. I'm just watching. Yeah. And... I have people saying that Jesus is the Son of God. Because according to that scripture right there, it was, it was, it was evidence. Yeah. Jesus always gave acknowledgement to the Father, who is above. Okay. So it's it's obvious. Uh, uh, the Trinity thing, um, I, I kind of like understand the person who created this video trying to uh, say the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are not equal. Yeah. But, so people are saying they're equal in rights because they're all God. He's trying to clarify that they are all not equal. Fine. So that that's it. And all the religion, like all the prophets that have come before, they're all preaching one thing, monotheism. That means worshiping of one God. So that's it. So like this strange thing is thing, thing like we don't do in Islam, like comparing like Jesus is the Father, the Son, and all this way. God is like Jesus and God is are equal, you get. So in Islam, that's why I told you, like, before we don't do those things, like, everyone is below God. You get. So that's it. So 
Let's continue. Great prophet of God. In fact, Islam holds a unique position among world religions as it is the only religion other than Christianity that acknowledges Jesus as the Messiah. You may be surprised to know that Jesus is mentioned more times by name in the Quran than Muhammad, peace be upon them both, and that Mary, the mother of Jesus, even has a chapter of the Quran named after her. God, out of his mercy for mankind, resolved all of the confusion surrounding Jesus by revealing the Quran. The Quran puts forward a clear picture of both God and Jesus that is easy to understand. People of the book, Jews and Christians, do not go to excess in your religion and do not say anything about God except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was nothing more than a messenger of God. His word directed to Mary, a spirit from him. So believe in God and his messengers and do not speak of a trinity. Stop this. That is better for you. God is only one God. He is far above having a son. Everything in the heavens and the earth belongs to him and he is the best one to trust. Jesus is not God or even the literal son of God. Rather, he is a man, messenger and messiah. He is a creation of God, just like the messengers that God sent before him, such as Abraham and Moses. God, by contrast, is unique and separate from his creation. Islam is a religion See, of... That is something I don't accept. Um, that's why I don't want to accept. Saying Jesus is like Abraham and Moses and Noah, I don't accept that one. Why? Because Jesus is not neither. Because um, he came to fulfill, I said it before, he's the son of God. He came as a messenger to come um, fulfill the word that God has promised to mankind. Mm -hmm. It does not mean he's like Abraham or Moses. The same, my Bible said, before Abraham, Jesus was. Jesus was the one, was the one who said it. Mm -hmm. You get? Yeah. So that's scripture itself. That verse itself clarifies like he had been there right from time before he came as a flesh. Okay. You get? So that's why like, whenever a Muslim are like, um, sorry, I'm not using Muslim, the right of the entire world and stuff are like um, Jesus. Um, should I use it that way? According to what he said, Jesus and um, Abraham or Moses and Solomon and David, they are all the same. Mm -hmm. We question all this um, dispute that fact. So, like, Jesus is above everyone? Yeah. Wow. Because the thing is that all of them are creation of God. You get. So, you see, like, even in the prophethood, we have, like, I've forgotten how they call it, like, the top five prophets. We have Abraham, Moses, Noah, Jesus, and Muhammad, mm -hmm. peace be upon them. So they are the five out of the hundred, I believe, I think in Islam, 124,000 prophets came, or were sent by God. Some were mentioned in the Quran, some were not mentioned. Mm -hmm. So you see, so all those things like, no matter what, we have rankings. Uh, they are the top five, those five uh, prophets I mentioned, peace be upon them all. So you see, all of them, when we say they are equal, in the sense that they are all creation of God. There is nothing like this one is above this. They are the top five. They get all of them are unique in their own way. Because you are all seeing them as equal because they are all, you see them as messengers and no one is above another. That is how. Yeah, they are all you guys see creation. Both. Yeah, but you people are. Seeing. We don't see it like that. Like he's different because when yeah. he was given best to a word. Aside for me, I don't see um, the way he was given birth is miraculous. Though. Mm -hmm. yeah. I accept that. But I, I don't point that one. That that is what makes him like mm -hmm. overall stuff. Like that. His his existence on earth, his ways he spoke out, the things he did. Those mm -hmm. by that scriptures, if I refer to. When he said, um, before Abraham, Jesus was. Mm -hmm. That proved a point like 
he have existed before. Abraham was written in the Old Testament. You get uh -huh. Jesus, a story about Jesus was written in the New Testament. So Abraham, it's long. So before you, such a person who said before Abraham, Jesus was means he has been for me, how I understand, he has been in existence since. Yeah. So I get, I get you. He has been brought to the how I'm saying it, he has been brought in to the form of human to come um fulfill the purpose that he was being sent by God to fulfill. Okay. I understand you. But like on our own side. It's just a normal human being chosen by God as a prophet. And he did miracles based on God's command. And he's never equal to God. He's below God. <laughs> he's a creation of God. God is a creator. And we believe you can't compare the creator with the creation. That's how we see it in our religion. Can I get it? Yes. Let's keep watching. Mm -hmm. Clear guidance. There is no confusion about who God is and who Jesus is. The Quran provides the simplest, easiest, and most accessible description about the nature of God. A healthy relationship with our Creator is only possible when we understand who He is. Why, when I saw this, the title of the video, I already know it's been to a lot of discussions, a lot of, um, a little bit of arguments. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it was a healthy one though. Yeah, it's, it was a healthy one and I get to understand the video more, better, clearer. Um, I learned some things from his point of view and uh, I also learned- I learned from yours as well. From yeah. So it's, it's an amazing video and comment below what you think about this video. Subscribe to our channel and give yeah. us a thumbs up. Share this with us, many as cars. You know how to do it, guys. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay. I just want a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, you stand my bed. I got scales on.